Welcome to another biblically-based look into today's news from Christian Voice New Zealand. Now here's Mike Bain. I reject the premise of that question. So often we've heard this answer from our Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern. When she says she rejects the premise, what exactly is it that she's rejecting? You know, a premise is a statement in an argument that provides reason or support for the conclusion. There can be one or many premises in a single argument. So when questioned by the opposition in Parliament, is the Prime Minister correct in rejecting the premise of a question? Rhetorically, yes. If the premise is false, any answer which implicitly accepts the premise will be tainted by it. Conversely, a response which explicitly rejects the premise still gives it a kind of credence, as it implies that the question is worth responding to. Now, let me give you an, an example. Question, when did you stop beating your wife? Answer, I've never beaten my wife in the whole time we've been married. Question, so you admit beating her before you were married? See what I mean? After five years in government, Jacinda Ardern has become very proficient at batting away questions she doesn't want to answer in this manner. Now, former Prime Minister John Key was a great practitioner of changing a narrative, but was able to satisfy the questioner. We, the people of New Zealand, elect others on trust to public office, to point the country in a direction which satisfies the majority, to be fiscally prudent, to keep us safe, and to ensure we have a good quality of life. For over a century, these people have been bestowed titles, such as the Right Honourable Charlie Horse, as an example, because being a member of the House of Representatives was an honourable position. Alas, this is not the case today when we watch the actions of these honourable people in the main ring of the parliamentary private schoolyard, controlled by the Right Honourable Chief Bully Trevor Mallard. But let's get back to the question, or the premise of the question. Any question asked, doesn't matter who asks it, deserves an answer and shouldn't be dismissed or batted away. Now it's fair to say, we all know Jacinda Ardern has a different perception of the meaning of truth, but I'm concerned about others who are just as aspirational as she is to occupy the Prime Minister's office on the ninth floor of the Beehive. Enter the frame, Krasivaluxen. Crowned as the leader of the National Party, doing okay in his personal rankings in the polls, party going well without too much drama, until events in the USA drew attention back to his claim, he's a Christian. Now Luke 6.44 says, each tree is recognised by its own fruit. Now in an earlier podcast, I challenged Luxon's claim of Christianity following his watered down statements the week following, claiming he had not been to church for five years or so. I said at the time, if Luxon is going to wear that Christian t-shirt, he must have the courage to walk the walk. The Roe v Wade fallout has drawn attention to New Zealand's liberal laws on abortion. Luxon was quick to point out, if National were to hold power, they would relitigate the laws as had only just been passed, and he would rather work on the issues such as our dying economy. Well, as a Christian, I was a little disappointed, but knowing the mood of the country, I was satisfied with his response. Now, enter MP Simon O'Connor and social media. Since then, Luxon has scrambled and deflected so many questions to restate his original stance on abortion, which he continues to refuse to do. And this one issue has raised many flags for Luxon regarding the future. You know, we often compare people to trees in this country, for example, the mighty Totara, because when one falls, its impact is felt. Luxon is by no means regarded as a mighty totara tree whose roots are deeply grounded in the earth, but Luxon's Christian's roots look poisoned by desperation and populist politics. You know, it was kind of like Luxon forgot or was embarrassed that he, along with half his caucus, voted against the Abortion Act of 2020. We, all of us, are driven by desire, but that desire is also grounded in the belief of who we are as a person. For Christopher Luxon, his claim he's a Christian, this is where his roots are grounded. When someone makes the claim that they're a Christian, they have a deep burning desire to serve God, and other people will hold you to a higher account. Could it be that Christopher Luxon, by his actions, is now refuting the premise of his own claim? Yes, I was a Christian, but no longer an active one, no longer on the team. Bit like being a former All Black, you know, you have the jersey, but not the desire or the age to front up to the opposition these days. An interesting point to note. Much has been made in the past of both the beliefs of both Ardern and Luxon. 
Now, Adun, brought up and grounded in the beliefs of the Church of the Latter-day Saints, which she's rejected, and Luxon claims today to be a Christian. Adun's fruits are well documented, but the Bible warns us that many will come professing his name. So stay on the watch, my friends. Stay on the watch. We as a nation are becoming desperate to rid ourselves of the evil that has control of this country. So stay on the watch and be vigilant, be discerning. Matthew 7, 15. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ferocious wolves. Mr. Speaker, I completely reject the premise of that question. <laughs> I refute the premise of the question. I absolutely refute the premise of that member's question. Again, the member is wrong in the premise of his question. Mr. Speaker, I refute the premise of that question. I, I reject that premise of that question because I reject the premise. Feel free to leave your comments, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. For more information about our work and how you can support it is available on our website, christianvoicenewzealand.com.